Okay. So welcome everybody to this first Vela community call. We are pretty happy that actually there are um, some interested people, non graphonistas in this in this Vela call. Uh, let me share uh, first oh, um, my screen just to to, to see as, as a guide. Uh, let me share my entire screen. We, uh, as you see in the in the document we share about the community call, uh, we put a tentative agenda, but uh, uh, it really or, or 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 it was just some tentative. We don't need to stick to it. Uh, as maybe you already know Bela or not, or you want to know some some details. So uh, I don't know. It's it's my first community call too. So uh, I'd like to know here uh, who are, are you don't need to talk. You can just drop a chat message. Who already already knows Bela or who already has used it, or who. Mm, is just here to know what's what it's about for curiosity, but don't really have tried it. Uh, never. Uh, uh, sorry, maybe we, we we should present before. I'm Mario Macias. I'm I'm software engineer in the Grafana Bay Latin. Here in the call is also Nikola Gwiczewski, as you will see in the background. He's, he's our, our principal engineer. And also Mark Tuduri joined. Sorry, Mark, I didn't add it you in the, in the caption. I forgot it. Sorry. Uh, it will be the last time it happens. Uh, but Mark recently joined our, our team too uh so we are the three engineers working working here in in grafana in grafana, in grafana yeah mm -hmm. so yeah i don't know if I, any one of the attendees wants to introduce himself and tell us what uh, why uh, or what wants to know about Bela or what uh, they want to comment about Bela is, is optional. Okay. That's okay. Yeah. That's, that's okay. Uh, someone else uh, entered. Hello. Hi. Uh, hello, uh, Selva. Uh, we we saw uh, we were commenting uh, that uh, oh uh, yes yeah. uh, we were commenting or asking if people want to um, introduce themselves voluntarily. I mean, it's, it's not needed or because uh, to introduce themselves and uh, comment what they are expecting of this community call or what they want to know about Grafana Vela. Or what? Or what? What do they want us to 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 talk about? Uh, if not, then it's it's fine. I think we can then uh, start with a generic uh, presentation about uh, what is Grafana Bela, and and then we can discuss discuss other topics, do a demo, and. Okay, Adrian. Yeah. Uh, no, thanks. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Adrian. Uh, Adrian comments wants to learn more about it and watch the demo. Okay, so let's 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 do it. Uh, we created a, we did a presentation, but uh, more as backup slides rather than something we need to or, or to a script for the for the whole talk. So what is Grafana Vela? Basically, it's a software component that allows you how to instrument HTTPS, HTTP2, and gRPC services in Go applications. More protocols are on the way, like SQL, maybe in, in the midterm, 
um, other messaging protocols. Uh, it supports full context propagation, but it also supports HTTP in other languages. Uh, we tested with, with old versions of Go, uh, Java, .NET, Python, Ruby, Node.js, Rust, C, and C++, and we were all, all, also able to instrument them. Uh, it, uh, we produce partial context propagation in, in that case. Uh, another feature of Vela is that we are fully integrated with Kubernetes. Uh, the, it means service, we can select uh, the services to instrument by pod, deployment namespace, and so on. And we decorate metrics and traces with Kubernetes metadata. We are integrated with Kubernetes, but we are not uh, only exclusive of Kubernetes. You can run Vela as a, as a, um, as a regular operating system process. So, uh, Hushi uh, commented that, uh, or asked if is Vela scoped to HTTP request and gRPC. Uh, yeah. uh, he did a good question about uh, if Vela is able to auto-instrument phone call traces. Uh, not at the moment, not at the moment. Uh, uh, if if there is a phone call management software that that is or can be instrumented, uh, it's another protocol in the future we could add. The same way we plan to add SQL or other messaging protocols, if there is a demand for this kind of uh, more streaming-based protocols, it could be it could be. Uh, considered, but not at the moment, not at the moment. At the moment, we are more thinking on RPC-like uh, messaging. But it's a, it's a very good question. It's, it's actually a use case we never thought about, but it can, it can be interesting. Continuing with that, uh, Vela is, is able to work standalone. Uh, sending data, it, it, it instruments the data and, or the instruments the, your, your applications and it can send data uh, to uh, either the Grafana agent, the open telemetry collector or being collected, it can expose metrics in Prometheus uh, or you can submit the, the data directly to the Grafana open telemetry endpoint. I forgot to mention that Grafana Vela is able to expose either uh, metrics and traces, metrics in, a, a, in both open telemetry and Prometheus formats, and traces in open telemetry in open telemetry format. And it's an open source. It's an open source uh, application uh, based on open standards. So you can you can use it even if you are not a Grafana user. You can use it with any other. Prometheus or Open Telemetry Collector. So, what's the reason about Vela? Uh, imagine you want to instrument an application. You have your web service, and you want to submit data to a collector named, let's say, Grafana. Uh, you want some metrics and execution traces. One option is to use a runtime agent. This is, Vela uh, doesn't come here to replace the, exi the existing uh, instrumentation approaches. It's just a, uh, it, it comes just to fill some gaps that the, the other, the, the current approaches uh, have opened. So one is using a runtime agent between your service and your runtime environment. This is mostly used in uh, runtime managed languages like JVM, uh, Java, .NET, Python. It has some it has some limitation. First is that you need to deploy the agent as part of your app within the memory address space. You need to pack it and deploy it. Uh, it could bring some some overhead in some in some languages. Uh, it could add some memory and CPU to your application. 
Uh, also, running multiple agents at the same time is not always supported by the vendors, uh, be, by some vendors, because some of them assume they are the only agent running, so there can be some incompatibilities, uh, or they just won't offer support if there are other agents with with their with their own vendors. And some agents may have limitations. And uh, you need to you need to, so, to find some way to overcome those those limitations. The other option is uh, what uh, we usually do in in languages like Go or C. That is manually instrument your code. So your web service has some functions, and you need to add some instrument manually some instrumentation points into your code. You uh, then. Uh, uh, you need in that case to recompile and redeploy your application. Uh, it has also some disadvantages. The first is that your instrumentation code is merged with your actual business uh, code. So it adds some maintainability overhead uh, and it also adds a vendor lock in because changing changing your your instrumentation provider some often uh, requires uh, changing or or, or refactoring uh, big parts of your of your code it requires a lot of effort even if you already don't if you are instrumenting a legacy application that is not already instrumented you need to invest some um, development resources instrumenting it uh, that means also that it's easy to miss instrumenting uh, some some APIs and, and enter in an in an error prone manual process. The the alternative we offer we say there's the previous alternatives we show have their holes but they uh, they are, they are still valid for many other use cases but Bela allows to overcome those scenarios in which either an agent or manual uh, instrumentation is not feasible. Maybe not from a technical perspective, but maybe just from an operational perspective or a, an organizational perspective. So uh, Bela is a, is a process that run in your, in your system as a host process or as a privileged container and Thanks to eBPF, is able to inspect your run your code runtime or libraries or the Linux kernel in order to provide metrics and traces and send them to to Grafana. Uh, eBPF is able to hook into some concrete points of your applications and the Linux kernel, and then is able to audit and create traces about what's happening there and then submitting them. The advantage of Vela is that uh, you don't need uh, a to ship agents with your code. You, you just need Vela to run into your host. Uh, it also has the advantage of having native performance. Uh, this is important in, in some in some languages that are interpreted and the the agent or or the the the, the instrumentation agent is also in inter, in an interpreted language that may 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 add a significant overhead Vela, with Vela you can get metrics traces or both and you can export them in well known standards like prometheus and open telemetry uh, what's EBPF? We have mentioned EBPF before. Uh, EBPF is comes from the uh, now it has its own meaning, it, its own meaning, but it comes from extended Berkeley packet filter. It's a virtual machine that is built into the Linux kernel that allows you to write and hook your own programs into into the into the kernel functions as in the in the user space as we mentioned. It's like uh, at the booger breakpoint anywhere, but instead of inspecting visually, you inspect it, inspect it automatically, and then you can get data. You can know 
when a process starts, when a process ends, the values of their, 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 their variables, etc. Uh, eBPF is not magic. Uh, often people say, oh, you use BPF, you can say everything, so you can provide a, a lot of information. And it's true, but it's very sensitive about how the memory is laid out. That means that eBPF or the way you have to code your eBPF programs will vary if you are instrumenting a Go program or you are instrumenting a, a C program or even mm, it's sensitive to the optimizations of the compiler or some implementation details or the compiler. Uh, so I think that instead of um, after gi gi uh, giving a introduction to the to the technology and watch Vela, we can do a demo instead of keep entering in, in details. And if you want to know some detail or there's something that you don't understand, please raise your hand, interrupt me, and uh, we can uh, answer your questions. I will do a, a demonstration of a simple service example. Let me share, let me share my console here. Let me share, let's deploy. I have a Kubernetes cluster here in my, in my laptop. Uh, and let's deploy a, a, an example web service that is not instrumented. It's a service written in Go. Oh, oh, let me upload first. Mm. Sorry, I should uh, make all. We need some seconds to build the service and, and push the images to my local. I should have done this before before starting the the call, but I forgot that I destroyed the I destroyed the the, the cluster and started a fresh cluster. But that should be quick. They are simple or small services. Uh, this service is basically a, a load generator that or, or a front-end service that submits data to a back-end service via HTTP. The front-end is also HTTP and this back-end sends some requests to some workers uh, that are communicated via gRPC in order to demonstrate all the protocols. Do you want to maybe just quickly show the source so people can see it what does it look like or? oh yes yeah. the, the source you I mean don't know the, 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 the deployment yeah the deployment yeah so okay that, okay yeah. so we can see it what it looks like yeah we're not doing okay. anything mm. yeah yeah we are not doing anything strange so weird. we have this this is not a video <laughs> joking uh, <laughs> We are deploying a, a front-end application that opens this, this container port 8080 and it is connected to a back-end uh, service. This service is ex ex exposed as a Kubernetes service. Then we have the back-end deployment that has some uh, workers. Let me, one moment. Uh, this, these workers, let me just, this is uh, this is just an implementation detail. Uh, this way, we are we are splitting up the requests on three on, on on three requests. So we will see how the the load is distributed amongst many many workers. This is just an implementation detail of of detail of this uh, backend example service. Yeah. And a part of this backend, we have the uh, worker deployments, which are the images I, I saw before. And also we have a load generator 
is, is just sending requests to the, to the front end in order to automatically generate some, some traces. So let me... Uh, Let me deploy it and here we see all the all the bots. Nice. Let me do a, a quick port forward just to uh, is from and Huh? Ah, sorry, I forgot the name. I always forget the name space. Okay, it's at the end. This this service is just a factorial number calculator. You you see uh, you write here the number, and it should return a factorial. But sometimes it just randomly fails, like in this case, uh, to uh, to demonstrate also how Vela instrument some error, uh, some error return code. But if not, you you can see how it calculates some some big uh, factorials. This is an instrumented, so I will deploy Vela to instrument it. Uh, I will deploy Vela with my Grafana credentials. I first need to, uh, uh, to send data to Grafana Cloud. You could use any local Grafana instance or any other open telemetry or Prometheus supporting monitoring solution. So I will first my Grafana credentials dot YAML. And uh, let me see which branch I am. Okay, and here also, let's show, let's see the what we are deploying. Uh, we are deploying Vela. Uh, Vela requires some special permissions. One is to run in a privileged host, but when if you want to get it fully integrated with Kubernetes, you need to provide extra permissions to uh, be able to read some metadata of some Kubernetes objects. I will describe them uh, now. So uh, we created a service account for Vela and we granted to this service account this, uh, this cluster role uh, permissions. Uh, one is be able to list and watch replica sets and the other is to be able to list and watch pods. This is all the information Vela requires to query, uh, uh, to be able to query services and decorating services. Uh, then we deploy Vela as a, in, it can be deployed as a, as a sidecar container, so it will instrument only one pod, but uh, for us, the easier way or more recommended way is to deploy it as a diamond set. If you deploy it as a diamond set, it is important that it shares the host PID namespace so it's able to inspect all the processes in a in a given in a given host. And a part of that, uh, we are just providing Vela a configuration file. We can configure it also in via environment variables, uh, but in that case, it's simpler in a config file. I will show you later. And we need to provide uh, the, uh, open telemetry endpoint. This is Grafana Cloud and some headers in that case that will provide the authentication for, for security reasons. I'm not pa pa pasting here the headers. So, I'm taking them from the secret file I've deployed previously. I can show you later how is this secret file, the template. And this configuration file we provide is here. This is a very simple configuration file, basically saying to Vela to decorate the metrics and traces with routes, with routes and uh, provide some heuristic 
approach in order to group all the roots in order to avoid cardinality explosion. You can also, uh, uh, in, instead of providing this heuristic approach, you can provide manually your own roots. So you will make sure that any root uh, matching the pattern you provide will be grouped into that pattern. So you won't get multiple uh, root values. For example, when you, when in your URLs have user IDs or product IDs or, or, or things that very high cardinality that you don't want to be reported as, as part of the root, but as part uh, of a pattern. And here we have the way we tell discover, uh, Vela to discover the services we want to instrument. I say Vela to discover all the services in the demo uh, namespace. So if I deploy Vela like that, it will find all the services that I've deployed. But I can narrow this and, for example, uh, say, for example, I only want to instrument the, the backend. This way, we will instrument the backend deployment in the demo namespace. Let's try and later uh, later I will remove them and see how it can select multiple services. Do you need an extra oh yeah. do you need an extra dash in front of it or no? No, no. no. Oh, if, uh, is, oh, okay. Good question, good question. If I added an extra an extra dash, it will good instrument both. all the service they are two different entries then it will instrument either all the services here or either uh, this one so it it will end up instrumenting everything this way we we want to uh, just instrument all the other uh, services that fit both criteria in the name demo in the name in the demo namespace and in the backend deployment name uh, let me also see if uh, yeah, uh, I want. It's okay. I don't want to add more configuration at, at the moment. So let me deploy it. So it's it's creating the container. Uh, I just want to see where is this backend. This backend service is in the worker node. Uh, let's wait a bit until it uh, downloads the images from from the internet. It shouldn't take so many seconds. Okay, it is running. Let me let me just show the log messages. Okay, it uh, you can see that Baylor started and it the log say that it is instrumenting a process. Actually, the process command backend. It is only it only found that because it's actually the only process that uh, fits uh, our our it uh, our criteria yeah. yeah so let me go here and let's go to grafana cloud and uh, let's go for example to the my traces i will search you see here all the backend services all all, all the traces of the backend if you see if you check here there is only one backend service and here you can see some some other internal traces like this backend it, it, it receives this get factorial this is this heuristic uh, this factorial asterisk is the heuristic approach i said before here uh, the the url for this service is factorial slash and the number you want to calculate the factorial but since, since this number changes a lot, 
Uh, if we expose this as, as an attribute to metrics, we will get cardinality explosion. And um, Grafana could struggle with so many cardinality. Uh, uh, you will get a high cost for your for your for your metrics. This way, we are any factorial slash and some uh, var uh, variable sequence of characters. In that case, a number will be grouped into this into this root factorial asterisk group and you can see here how we are getting the 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 trace for either this the request but also as a client we can see here the request the request for the worker nodes you can see how much time the request has been has been in queue and how much time the request has been processed by 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 the application this is something that we can only at the moment achieve with ebpf because ebpf allows us to hook into the runtime in order to know not only how much time uh, the 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 service has been processed but also how much time the request has been in queued in that case the number is pretty low because the the service is under low load but under high load, this this number can be can be pretty high. And uh, since we are only instrumenting this backend, let's extend our our request for any other service in. Uh, uh, no, sorry, no, this. Uh, let's just remove this deployment mode. And let's say, okay, now I want you to instrument all the services in that namespace. And Bela try to instrument all the processes, service and client, both services and clients into this namespace. I need to redeploy it again. Mm, right. Okay, now you can see how um, Bela found three found three services in that node, the load generator, the front end, and the worker. The backend is missing because probably the backend is in the other node. Uh, this kind cluster has three three nodes if i if i do the logs in the other bela instance you will see this this other worker instance and the and the backend and now i have since i have multiple nodes i have some bela instances sending data to grafana cloud we should already see them here so if i just refresh you can see now how i have multiple traces the load generator and the worker and uh, the backend should be also in into in here uh let let me load for example the trace of the load generator uh okay you can see it here uh let me it seems that the backend traces did not yet arrive let me just refresh it one moment um, or let me directly look for the for the backend traces uh, we found that this that has happened sometimes uh, this is a matter of the catch the um, okay this is this is something from the grafana cache let me just one moment uh empty cache and hard reload and we should see the the data coming
Maybe expand the load chain. Okay. Maybe it's under because it combined the traces. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah. 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 It, it finds the load chain because the backend is inside. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good appreciation, yeah. Nicola. Okay. So here you can see how distributed traces work. We can see the whole life cycle of the request from since the load generator to the front end to the back end and how the back end is invoking invoking multiple times these these workers and if you enter you can see also how the how the traces are decorated with kubernetes metadata uh, you can see here there is a namespace all the data namespace the node name the, the pod name and some other standard open telemetry attributes for for Kubernetes instances. And this is compatible with the application observability solution in Grafana. This, this data takes like five minutes to get uh, fully populated, but if you, if you have Grafana Cloud and you have application observability, you can see here how, the, how your applications appear and, and how you see some metrics. I also forgot to show previously in the traces this, uh, this service graph. You can see also here uh, a service graph. Mm. Okay, you can see here your service graph. For example, we have this load generator working in the front end, uh, and, and and how the front end is connected to the to the worker. So you can even see some application a map with your application metrics. Uh, yeah, that that will be pretty much the the demonstration of how Grafana Bela works. Uh, I don't know if you have some question or some comment, something you would like to 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 see. Don't be shy. But if not, it's it's also fine. Uh, is there something else you would like to talk about, uh, Nicola or Mark? Yeah, this was a great demo. Thanks for doing this. And I just wanted to mention that this community call is also sort of a forum for folks to come in and just ask questions, um, maybe even show us something. If something doesn't work, we can go and debug it on, on the call together or kind of look at it together, uh, provide general help around instrumentation and so on. So uh, happy to do that as well. Uh, it shouldn't be just one-sided, but uh, yeah. This was a great start, Mario. Thanks for running with us. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. We are very happy and grateful that you show interest in Vela and uh, were with us in this, in this first community call. Thank you, you too, Nicola and Mark for support and preparation of this uh, community call. So we are, we want to repeat this the second Wednesday of every month. It will be an hour earlier than today. So today it was at 5 p.m. UTC, but from the next month, it will be 4 p.m. UTC. It will be the same video call link. Uh, the this this community call recording will be uploaded to 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 YouTube YouTube. So if you find it might be interesting for some colleague, feel free to share it. Feel free to reach us. We have a, we have a public Slack channel. Uh, you can reach us there. I will. I will later copy the um, the link to to the Slack channel here in the document, so you can reach us 
if you if you want we have a pretty nice uh, it's a small still but pretty nice community even in the slack channel with if you have any issue we try to reply uh, as soon as possible but uh, there are some other members external to grafana that are also collaborating and contributing so yeah we, we are happy if if you just right. join us and start asking questions suggestions or just collaborating uh, the way you want so say that i think it's maybe time to if no more questions it's time to say goodbye stop the recording and thank you very much see you in one month all right yeah. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Okay, the record stopped. Okay, thank you very much. See you later. Bye. Oops.